This program is brought to you by the City of Oceanside. The following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. This program is underwritten in part by Waste Management of North County in Oceanside. We are dedicated to serving customers and community as a safe, comprehensive service provider, a good corporate citizen, and a responsible environmental steward. Think green. Think waste management. I'm CJ Demento, your local librarian from the Oceanside Public Library and city staff for the Oceanside Arts Commission. I am pleased to welcome you to the February edition of Oceanside Spectrum, a chance to hear about some great community work being done here in Oceanside and throughout North County. First, there's community arts programmer Elaine Widower, an amazingly talented community asset and president of the Oceanside Cultural Arts Foundation. Gwen Grimes, executive director of the Mission San Luis Rey, is also here to share about their exciting online auction. Interfaith Community Services Chief Executive Officer Greg Angel will tell us all about how to connect with hardworking, qualified individuals seeking employment right here in North County. And Alma Cisco Smith, as first vice president of the North County African American Women's Association, will share about their global citizen and global ambassadors programs, as well as the other exciting work that they're doing. So stay tuned because Oceanside Spectrum starts now. Elaine Whitehour, president of the Oceanside Cultural Arts Foundation, is with us today. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. I'm so <laughs> glad that you're here with us. Thank you. And so I, I want you to tell us a little bit about OCAF, okay. as, it's, as it's known, <laughs> uh, affectionately known, yes. right? Right. Or the Oceanside Cultural Arts Foundation. Tell us a little bit about the history. Okay. Would you? Oceanside Cultural Arts Foundation was established yeah. legitimately or legally, I guess, in 1989. Okay. And it was, quote, to raise funds to promote cultural activities in Oceanside and the surrounding area. And I think we've done a good job with that. Their yeah. first uh, task on hand was to build a reputable art museum. And we have the Oceanside Museum of Art. Thank you, OCAF. Yeah. And then from there, uh, fostering and expanding the fine arts in our communities, and so we just continue to grow. Yeah. Oceanside Day of Art, singularly, then its third year, it became Oceanside Days of Art, right. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, as a result of that, Artist Alley was established, yeah. and um, the Oceanside Music Fest, my heart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we began um, scheduling events to raise funds for student performing and visual artist scholarships. Um, the Oceanside International Film Festival, of which KOCT is a partner. Um, in fact, they're scheduling their 2021st virtual event. It's going to be a 10-year reprise, and it'll be February 20th and 21st. Wonderful. Great news. Great yeah, news. yeah, it is. Um, right on Oceanside, which is the only literary uh, fest in yeah. North County and was the largest for a long time. Yeah. We just had that this past week. It was our first virtual, and we did rather well. I was pleased with that. Yeah. Um, and Art Walls, when we retired, um, Oceanside Days of Art because mm -hmm. it there was not enough of us to do it justice so Art Walls um, we have one month and we feature a single visual artist Res the uh, reception we have the performing arts so it, it's still a nice nice blend mm -hmm. and then as a result of the quarantining and COVID and all that good stuff we yes. created Oceanside Arts Live. Okay. And it is an online uh, Facebook and we have a YouTube channel now. Okay. And we encourage our visual and performing artists in the community to send us, submit videos of their art. We've even had a couple mm -hmm. of culinary artists sub submit some videos. So we're keeping busy. 
Great. So Oceanside Arts Live, artists can submit their videos mm -hmm. to you and it just provides a, a platform for them right. to be able to be visible to the public? Exactly, yeah. We've okay. had, uh, let's see, we've had a couple of, oh, some incredible dance. Uh, we've had some poetry, some, um, what would you call it, uh, spoken word Wonderful. videos. Yeah. Um, I did a couple on Shakespeare, <laughs> decoding Shakespeare and then performing Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've, um, we've had one on how to create a five minute cake in a cup on um, microwave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a wide range. Any, in... any number of talents exactly. uh, OCAF will, will be happy to support. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I know that you're really interested in supporting the entire community, having yes. a lot of representation throughout mm -hmm. all of Oceanside. Yes. And you try to do that with your committees as well. So tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. that. If you would. Well, normally, we would be out yeah. in the different uh, mm -hmm. communities and the different uh, neighborhoods, but we're in a new normal, right? Yeah. So we are seeking to, we want to reflect all of Oceanside. We want to represent all the faces of Oceanside. Right. So that's my primary reason to be here today, is to recruit. Uh, okay. We have, even with the restrictions and with COVID going on, we do have um, three committees, if you will, that okay are ongoing, they are active, and we would definitely love anyone who's got the passion, the talent, the commitment, the uh, treasure, <laughs> okay. that, would like to, that would like to help us um, and support us. So how do they reach you? How okay. do they do that? Someone's okay. saying, you know what, that's something I want to be a part of. W where do they go? Okay. Uh, we have a website, okay. and I'm sure that's being crawled somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. We have an email address, which is also, I'm sure, being crawled. You can call us on the phone. We have a phone number. Okay. We have a Facebook page. So, hey, there's Easy. any number. I'll leave my email address, and you can contact me. <laughs> <laughs> If that, right, if that's, if that's what, uh, the only way you can do it. Um, all right, all right. So to the public, support your arts and culture organizations, get involved, contact OCAF, and um, thank you so much for thank being you. here today. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you, definitely. We'll be right back. is with us and as executive director of our famous and beautiful Mission San Luis Rey, you must be so busy. I'm so busy, yeah. <laughs> but it's a good busy. Good, and you're, you're just trying to stay connected with the community, yeah. right? Tell we we really are, like. and it's, you know, since, since the pandemic started in March, it's been really important for us to, to stay connected with all the guests who come to the mission and the people who have supported the mission for so many years, and yeah. so... So we've always been busy on social media, but more so than ever, you know, we've really tried to at least daily post something about, you know, what's going on at the mission, um, you know, maybe a, a Franciscan reflection or, or just, you know, have a nice day, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then we've also tried to, I've been trying to at least once a week, send an email to, to the people who have been supporters of the mission for many years and okay. just, um, you know, staying connected with them you know, let, again, letting them know what's going on or, or what's going on in the world and kind of what's been touching me. So yesterday I wrote something about mm -hmm. Martin Luther King and, and really how inspirational he is and how very Franciscan he was. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and of course, you know, we have so much racial uh, dis unjust, injustice, I guess. Yeah. And so, um, so just, you know, what's speaking to me and, and, and inspiring me. So, right. so, you know, and connecting with, with our community. So. So, so vital right now, yeah, that, yeah, that connection with yeah. each other. Yeah, and we, you know, get, we get great responses back, yeah. and so that's how you know, we know it's working and, and we're you know, staying connected with people. 
And I know that one of the things you have done at the mission is, is retreats. Yes. Right? Which yep. is another way to, to connect. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us what that is looking like right now. So now it's very different. So normally yeah. we have about 5,500 people a year that come to a retreat at the mission. Right. And, um, and it's been very different. We've had, we've still been able to host retreats. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, very, you know, obviously less people. Um, we've had retreats inside. We've had retreats outside. So right now we're outside. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of people, as you can imagine, are very anxious about being in groups. And sure. so we, we have fewer, fewer retreats. But, but we have some wonderful spaces at the mission to host you know, a nice retreat outside. And so we're, we're super grateful for that. Um, we've been really trying to, to remind people that it's a great place to come just for the day. And so we have so many people who are working at home and have mm -hmm. been stuck at home for months on end. And so you know, we're inviting people to come to the mission just for the day and work at the mission for the day or, or just, yeah. you know, sit and reflect and, and, uh, and enjoy the beauty of the mission. So. And you're encouraging fourth graders. They've always done a project about the mission. Yes, yes, uh, yes. You have a video tour that, that you're able to do with we, them. We oh, did. Okay. We're, we're really excited. We have a couple of docents who, um, who have been doing docent tours at the mission yeah. for years. We have about 10,000 fourth graders that come every year. So, and we really miss them. I mean, they're so fun, as you can imagine. And so, yes. so we really wanted to come up with something that would, um, you know, bring the mission to them. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we know teachers and parents are struggling with distance learning. And so we put together a, a video for the fourth graders. Um, and so, uh, so teachers have been very, um, very pleased to have something to, to supplement yeah. their, their education of the fourth grade missions. And so, um, and, you know, and even, you know, schools from all over the state that can't come to the mission, you know, can utilize it. So, so it's kind of a new tool for them to use. So, so it's, it's, we were just so happy with how it turned out and, and we're, yeah, we're really happy to be able to provide that for, for teachers. So I want to make sure that you get a chance to talk about the upcoming online auction yes. because it's a big deal. So I want you to tell us what, what it, what's it going to look like? What are we going to see? What can we bid on? We're so excited about this. So this yeah. is the first time we've ever done this. Okay. Um, and so we've, we, we've come up with a lot of, um, of experiences at the mission. And so, so one of the things that we'll be auctioning off is a, a tour of our bell tower. Um, so you can go up the really cool old stairs up into the bell tower. I've been there 10 years. I've been there once, <laughs> uh, like a you few months ago, right? Tower. I'm like, this is Visit. an amazing experience. <laughs> um, and so we have a, a fantastic docent who, who's our, also an art historian. And so she, we have a, a art tour of our, of our church with all of the amazing artwork that's in there that, you know, um, we have a year of retreats and so you can go on any retreat for a whole year. We have a lot of fantastic retreats that we host throughout the year. Yeah. Um, and then we have a lot of really cool places at the mission for a dinner. So we have an executive chef on site, and so uh, a lot of cool places around the mission where you can uh, have a dinner for uh, you know six people, a nice barbecue on our back, Sounds in the back fun. of the mission, and then a really cool um, opportunity to do a behind-the-scenes photo shoot. Um, so most people, when they come to the mission, don't get to see kind of the behind-the-scenes area, which is private for retreats and, and for our friars that live there. And so there's some amazing spots for photo shoots. So I think that will be a really cool so opportunity as well. Now, yes. how do people find out about how they can bid? Where do you want them to go? So they can go to our website, okay. sanluisray.org. Okay. And so that's where you can actually do the bidding. Um, we'll also be updating our Facebook and our Instagram uh, pages with some really interesting things throughout the two weeks. So the, the auction runs from February 1st through February 14th. So okay. you could get an auction item for a Valentine's gift. Um, but um, so we're, so we're going to, throughout those two weeks, we'll be shooting some little videos of, of what a bell tower tour might look like and, yeah. um, and like adding a few fun little things to the auction items throughout the two weeks. So we'll try to keep uh, people interested on, on social media with what's okay. coming up with our auctions. So looking forward to it. We are too. We are really excited. We think we have some really cool opportunities for people. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for being here today. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. And we'll be right back with our next guest. Son, love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Welcome back. Greg Angel is here with some very valuable information. He's executive director of Interfaith Community Services. 
Interfaith is focused upon empowerment and helping people help themselves. Tell us about that, Greg. We're, uh, thank you for having me here. Thanks for, for hosting the show. Happy that you're here. We, uh, Interfaith Community Services is different. We bring diverse people together, people of faith, people of compassion, yeah. to work in partnership to help our neighbors in need. Mm -hmm. And you have 3,000 volunteers. We do. And you bring together over 300 faith member congregations. That's, that's quite a team. Yeah, so we're everything from Anglican to Zen Buddhist. Okay. And uh, as uh, one of my predecessors, our founding exec used to say, and uh, you know, most importantly, we're just, we understand that there's wisdom in all perspectives mm -hmm. and all people. And we know that uh, people have tough times, especially now in COVID. Yeah. And so we help our neighbors with food, employment, housing, um, a whole wraparound set of services to help somebody be able to move forward in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I really want folks to know about the Carlsbad Service Day Labor Program because that's sort of um, a, and just an extension of the amazing work that you do, but it has a slightly different um, take. So. Tell, tell everyone about that. Yeah, sure. So I think when people, people who are familiar with interfaith community services yeah. know that we're providing food. They know right. that we're helping a lot of people overcome homelessness. But yeah. they may not know that we are also training and preparing laborers. And so if somebody's watching the show today and they need some work done around the house, uh, whether it's casual day labor, work out in the yard, or they have some, uh, some skilled labor that they need. They're installing some pavers in their patio. Mm. They need somebody who might even be able to bring their own tools. We actually vet and train and then match people seeking employment to uh, employers, whether it's private individuals in their own homes or small businesses looking for somebody mm. who can come in and help out for a week or two. Kind of for a short time. But you do the paperwork. Um, to, to get things kind of kicked off and, and do the match. Right, so we, yeah. vet, we vet all of the laborers, all of the employees, if you will. Okay. Um, everyone who we work with uh, has completed a health screening, has completed job safety training. They all are eligible to work here uh, in, in our country and we will work with the employer to negotiate what the rate of pay is going to be. Okay. And there's only one uh, form that every employer has to fill out. It's yeah. very easy. And we do this six days a week. So Monday through Saturday, people can give us a call. Okay. 760-446-5696. Uh, we're there six days a week, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Wow. And if somebody's listening or watching and has a, a job they're looking to fill, we can, yeah. we can help, that, help you out. Wow, that's incredible. Um, so you mentioned that you provide um, um, housing support, you, you provide um, food, you know, help folks that are food insecure. I want, I want you to tell the public a little bit more about those programs because they're so important and they do such great work in our community. And are needed more than ever. So a yeah. year ago this time, uh, February 2020, yeah. one in seven San Diegans uh, were in, at risk of, of, of hunger, of not, having, not knowing where their next meal is coming from. Right. Uh, as a result of COVID, that number is now one in three San Diegans. Um, we've seen the financial fallout of COVID disproportionately impact communities of color and yeah. low income, our low income neighbors. Yeah. So Interfaith is here to help provide grocery assistance, food support for okay. anyone in their time of need. Wow. We also can uh, often provide and help with rental assistance to make sure people don't lose their housing. Mm -hmm. If somebody has lost their housing, we can help with short-term shelter and okay. also try to get them into a place of their own. We yeah. do that uh, in our coastal communities here, right. uh, out of our Libby Lake Center in Oceanside, out of our Veterans Center, located uh, at the Veterans Association of North County okay. and also at the Carlsbad Service Center just uh, yeah. uh, down the street uh, near Palomar Airport. Okay, wonderful work that you do. So if people want to support your organization or they want to ha learn how to become a volunteer or learn more about your services, where would you direct them, Greg? Check out our website, okay. interfaithservices.org. We have all of our volunteer opportunities listed on there. Okay. It is tax season. And last year, yeah. our volunteers completed more than 2,000 tax returns free of charge for mostly low-income individuals wow. and families. Wow. And so we will, if, uh, if you're watching this, uh, we'll train you. You can use the IRS software. Yeah. You can do this in a safe office environment. 
um, and you can help people to be able to complete their tax returns, file their taxes. Just one of many volunteer opportunities, all on interfaithservices.org. Uh, and then we also have a lot of uh, ways people can support. We're, like we talked about, a partnership. So uh, we rely upon monetary donations, yeah. uh, in-kind donations, and yeah. as you said, thousands of volunteers. Amazing, and such a holistic view of our community and such amazing support at such an important time. Absolutely. So, thank you, Greg, so much for the great information. Thank you, CJ. We'll be right back with our next guest. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Thanks for coming back to Oceanside Spectrum. We have Alma Cisco Smith eight-year board member and outgoing first vice president of the wonderful nonprofit organization, the North County African American Women's Association. Hello, Alma. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your role with the NCAAWA, would you please? Well, I have to say it's been many-fold. Um, yeah. I first came to Oceanside knowing no one in 2009 retired, yeah. but one of the things I wanted was to find a women's group that was doing something in the community that was giving back and was meaningful, mm -hmm. and I was introduced to it, and so I found them and they found me. Um, we, I, I got Im involved immediately, became membership chair, scholarship chair, and then started working with the board when it actually transitioned to a really full nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. uh, very active with the bylaws and whatnot, and then finally mentoring, came back to mentoring program. As you know, yeah. North County African American Women's Association has been in existence for 25 years. Yeah. Um, and it was really wonderful for me to be able to be at that point when they were recognizing what they needed to do more mm. to really s begin to grow and to sustain yeah. itself. And let's so. speak about that, yeah. all that they're doing. Um, I know they have a global citizen program, a global ambassadors program, which I just, I, I loved hearing about and I love the, the passion and the mentoring that's happening. Tell us about those programs, please. Well, actually, um, as, when they started in 1995, it was yeah. actually with the Carl's Perkins grant that was to help women get back into the workplace. So they had that as a kind of a mentoring effort okay. and then um, moved on to more into s providing scholarships and whatnot. But yeah. Um, in 2013-14, I was really saying we need to do more mentoring for young girls and yeah. began to meet with an assistant um, principal at Martin Luther King Junior School okay. and from that grew this uh, idea for um, eighth grade girls becoming a global citizen. Great. And um, in 2018, as the word got out, other schools, <laughs> yeah. Jefferson uh, approached us and we began another group there. And, um, and then that has been growing. And one of our real dreams was, of course, to be able to continue with the girls once they went into their various high schools. Absolutely. And in July 2020, even with the COVID, mm -hmm. we launched Global Ambassadors, and those were for the upper-class girls. Okay. And it's a program where you mentor, um, mentor girls. Yes, and the eighth grade program is more of a group mentoring, so it's not matching so much one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of that was taking place in the in, in, um, on the sites in the schools. Okay. Uh, COVID, we're now having to flip yeah. virtual. Yeah. Um, global ambassadors is coming along at the time that COVID had hit, and we knew what we needed to do, so we started with their first their first program in July, and that was all virtual, 10-week session and leadership. Wow, wonderful, so. wonderful. And, and you, do, um, you do other things. You do a Gentleman's Gourmet um, event. To tell the folks about that. The Gentleman's Gourmet is something that actually has been in operation since almost the beginning of their programs because they started it primarily to support scholarships. Okay. Um, so every year, there's a Gentleman's Gourmet. We say it's like Costco on steroids. Mm -hmm. um, we have amateur and professional chefs that give of their time and donate everything yeah. in order for to provide a meal for various um, individuals coming forth. The proceeds from that event 
-hmm. goes for scholarships. Mm -hmm. We pay for only the rental of a space and everything else is given to us. And I want to say here yeah. that the community, those that come and attend, right. we're now reaching about 400 people wow. um, on that event. But these people in our community are able to help us provide these scholarships. In the last two years, 2018 and 2019, we just reached a little over $30,000 in scholarships Amazing. and then 27,500 in scholarships and respectively in those two years. Wow. So also need to say COVID hit us hard for that because okay. October it should have happened and it could not. Okay. So we're doing a very mini event in March um, okay. and it will be like a chef's um, preparation and showing the you know, how to prepare one of a famous meal. Awesome. And, um, and we'll do something that will be more in a mini, and that will be happening in March, and we'll be sending out information to our donors and all that have supported us and Wonderful. hope that it will help. Wonderful. And I, I know that you, on February 27th at 11 a.m., uh, you're having a Black History of Music and Dance program with Alyssa Junius and B.J. Robinson. Well, um, I want to say that yeah. the Oceanside Public Library is very essential in that. And for the last several years, we have partnered with Oceanside Public Library, and we've done some really wonderful programs yeah. for Black History Month. Yes. And they had to do a lot of research this time to try to find someone that could come and do something for us under COVID, right. and also for a price that we both could afford. So we have partnered with them for that, and they just let us know that they have been able to make a contract with them. So I'm sure we'll be going forward. Music and dance. Music and, food. and dance. The culture. Absolutely. The Amazing. art and culture of black history, music, and dance. Amazing. So if people want to learn more and they want to attend your events or support your organization, where do you want them to they go? They should go to the website, okay. ncaawa.org. Okay. Yes. And right. they should find it all. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Alma. Such a pleasure to have you here today. And thank you for having us. And thank you so much for watching this February edition of Oceanside Spectrum. The array of amazing nonprofit work being done locally is extraordinary and makes me so proud to be a part of this community and to work with local television here at KOCT. If you would like to be a guest on the show, please visit koct.org spectrum to find out details on how your nonprofit can be a part of Spectrum. Stay up to date with all things North County by visiting koct.org. Thanks and take good care. This program is brought to you by the City of Oceanside.